Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are finally at that point where I'm ready to cover the home remote. Not your remote in your home, the actual home remote app that will allow what I believe everyone to integrate everything into one app. Now the home remote has been around for quite some time, but most people don't know how powerful it is and how easy it is to integrate into your current home automation system. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so this is the home remote, or basically the interface for the home remote. And quite quickly, I think you guys will see why I'm saying that this will be uh, the one app to rule them all, so to speak, that lets you integrate all of your current apps and home automation profiles and hubs into one ecosystem. And I'll show you guys later why that's important. So we're just going to take a look around the UI uh, on the main area. You see you can add devices, you can add groups. Um, and groups we'll talk about in depth later you can do light mode dark mode background you can change that uh, you can back up and restore which is very important we'll put a pin in that and come back to that later so for now I just want to give you guys a little quick breeze through the UI uh, and try to add a device uh, or two and just kind of show you guys how everything works so we're gonna go to add a new device and kind of look around just so I can show you guys all the manufacturers that are baked into here day one you have things like Alexa Voice, uh, you have Ecobee, DirecTV, Home Assistant, Home Seer, Honeywell. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, smart Things, of course. Uh, you have ONVIF support, UPnP support, uh, Logitech Harmony. So, Wink. So, from day one, most of the major uh, players in the home automation and home hub game, you have access to. And those that you may not have direct access to, like with Alexa Voice, you can integrate some other things. I've showed you guys in the past how some of my devices are integrated through smart things that aren't natively handled by Alexa or by, uh, by Google Home. Uh, and we're just going to play with Alexa Voice real quick so I can just give you guys a quick idea. Basically, the same thing you've seen before, you would go through the prompts. Uh, log into the uh, service and let the webhooks handle the background uh, functions. So, yes, there may be a little bit of delay with some of the internet services that you guys would be using, but that's, you know, par for the course. I do like that they have microphone. Uh, you can enable the microphone on a separate device that isn't necessarily an Alexa device. So we'll go back and look down this list again and just, like I said, just kind of show you guys around. So uh, doing a quick search here, uh, if we wanted to add a camera, you could. Uh, so see if there's no system found. But what I want to do next, uh, we're just going to go ahead and go to the Logitech Harmony uh, plugin. Since I'm already logged into Logitech on this device, it automatically starts searching, which I like. Uh, and as you can see here, all of my uh, Harmony tabs are already brought in. So I can control the smart TV from here, the fan. Uh, quite a few options. This is, this is just, you know, a vanilla install. I haven't restored my install to this tablet just so I could show you guys how easy it is to pick this up and get running. So you don't have to have a very high level of home automation uh, knowledge. If you've installed an app and used it for some form of automation, in most cases, depending on the manufacturer, you can pull them into the smart uh, to the home remote and start using smart automations day one. So I figured there was definitely a lot of value in that feature that you guys could get use out of. Okay, so this is the home remote running off of my MacBook Pro M1. Uh, as you can see here, I have three cameras uh, already pulled in. Uh, all of the home automation that we've talked about in the past, my lights, motion sensors, garage doors, lock, just about everything's here. Uh, so this is more of a somewhat finished result of what you can do without any customization or add-ons or plugins. This is, again, a vanilla install, but with everything integrated in. So what I mean by that is uh, I didn't uh, adjust any of the tile sizes, which you can do custom tile sizes and stuff like that. Um, and we'll cover a little bit of that in the next video, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys again. So this device is already running. Uh, when I click on the Roku, you can kind of see you have the same options and somewhat the menus that you would have on the actual remote. 
So my idea uh, long term for this is to have this uh, basically on a tablet mounted on the wall that can service as my home automation hub where I can just grab it and go. Uh, I can click on the camera, see it in real time. Uh, and what I like is the tiles actually show motion as well. So if I had this on the wall, uh, I could see my, you know, I could see my front yard. I could see the, the door. Uh, I could see the garage. So if, you know, there's any movement in there, just through passing, I can see what's going on without having to, you know, interact directly with the tablet, which uh, is the eventual goal. So how do you get the home remote? So you can go to their website. Uh, there's obviously in the app stores for uh, all the major platforms, Android, um, Windows, and Mac. But on their website, they actually also have a uh, customizer where you can actually customize the look of the home remote. But it's Windows only at this time. So just kind of looking around the website, you can kind of see uh, the first thing they advertise is the, is the designer. When you go to the compatibility chart, you'll see the same list of vendors we saw uh, on the app but this is just more of a, a roundabout yes they support it if you want to look at some of these before getting too involved so again uh, you have Google Cast the one thing I noticed you have Google Cast but not Google Home um, but I don't think you necessarily need it like I said with some of the other integrations because most of these if they work with uh, one home automation device that work with the other, but that could be a, uh, a trade-off you may have to make if you have Google Home and currently uh, don't have any other hubs or devices. So again, uh, if you want the designer, you have to download it. Uh, the designer, like I said, is only available for Windows at this time. Uh, you can see down below they advertise the apps. Uh, you have the Amazon App Store, the Apple App Store, Google Play, and uh, Microsoft. But again, the design is only for a Windows PC currently. Now, you could always do a, a VM or something if you wanted to get that involved and just don't have any Windows device, but most people generally would have access to one. So that's gonna be it for this video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of the home remote. I know I've been promising it for a while, so I just wanted to give you guys a little quick tour of how the application works and some plans for the future in the next video i think we'll go ahead and cover a little bit of the customization you can do as far as groups and stuff like that and maybe just talk briefly about how you can do custom tabs uh, depending on uh, engagement if you guys want to see details we may go into detail but there are videos by the uh, creators of the home remote that go into that in depth if you guys wanted to skip ahead or get some some in-depth training from the people who actually created it. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for the first episode. We mostly just covered how to log into the app, how to set it up, and just a basic tour of the app. Remember, you don't need a Windows PC to do any of the adding or integrating or a PC at all for that matter, as long as you have your logins and if you have a current home automation setup or system or hub, including Alexa or Google or any of those other services, you can integrate them all in. So on the next episode, I'm going to go ahead and crack open the Windows PC. We're going to log into the Web GUI Designer and kind of show you around there and how easy it is to stack services and apps and as well as devices into that designer and then how to back it up and restore it onto a mobile device. So remember to like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell so you get notifications when I drop the next video, which shouldn't be very long from now. Toward the end of this series, I do have a, a bit of a surprise I want to show you guys, my master plan of how I want this to be set up. Uh, you may get a quick preview because of some other things that are going to come into play, but stay tuned for that and make sure you guys, like I said, like, subscribe, and Hit that bell for notifications. See you guys on the next one. Later.